I thought this stuff was banned in America. Maybe they had a good reason. Let's check out 10 U.S. foods you never knew were illegal. While these foods may be considered traditional dishes or delicacies in some countries, they are not welcome in the good old U.S. of A. Maybe I've had too much. What do you think? <laughs> Japanese pufferfish. No fish. Very fatal. Japanese puffer fish go by many names, including fugu, bok, blowfish, and globefish. It is a delicacy gingerly prepared by the best sushi chefs in the world. Because the skin, liver, gonads, and intestines are chocked full of a neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin saxotoxin, which is more dangerous than cyanide. If pufferfish is not adequately prepared and rid of the toxins, neurological symptoms can manifest between 20 minutes and 2 hours following consumption. <laughs> Pretty good. Initial symptoms include tingling of the lips and mouth, which may be followed by dizziness, tingling of the arms and legs, muscle weakness, paralysis, and vomiting. Poisoned diners can even die as a result of respiratory paralysis. Cooking or freezing pufferfish will not destroy the toxins. In fact, sawing the whole fish can cause the toxins to saturate into the flesh, making the entire animal poisonous, even after expert preparation. I shall be blunt. We have reason to believe you have eaten poison. Poison? It should also be noted that pufferfish are found in the waters of Florida. Consequently, Florida has banned harvesting the fish, too. Traditional haggis. Get your haggis right here, chopped heart and lungs. Haggis may be the national dish of Scotland, but its traditional iteration is unwelcome in the United States. While some people love haggis, others think it's awful. The reason for such controversy largely lies with the main traditional ingredient of the dish, offal, or sheep organs that include the lungs, heart, and liver. Once minced and cooked with onion, the offal is then mixed with oatmeal, suet, and seasoning, stitched into the sheep's stomach, and boiled for up to three hours. It is served with potatoes, turnips, and, depending on the tastes of the cook, a shot of Scottish whiskey. In 1971, the U.S. banned the importation of haggis due to the fact that proper haggis contains sheep's lungs. What is haggis? Sheep's stomach stuffed with meat and barley. How revolting! All animal lungs are prohibited by the U.S. Department of Agriculture USDA, over concerns that dangerous fluids, including stomach fluids, may contaminate the animal's lungs during the butchering process, which increases the risk of foodborne illness in humans. Haggis! That's it! Dismount the banister! There has been talk for years about allowing haggis back into the U.S., but it has yet to happen. Aki fruit. Why did I eat 12 of them? Why? Not many people will have heard of this fruit, but it is actually quite a popular fruit around the world. Also known as the Anki, Achi, and Aki apple, this fruit is the national fruit of Jamaica and is eaten when fully ripe. It is used in an assortment of jams, drinks, and candies, and apparently tastes like scrambled eggs when cooked. When it's unripe, however, Aki can be dangerous. It contains high levels of the toxin hypoglycin A, which disrupts blood glucose production and can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. Oh, you're having a bad day? Did you die? Left unchecked, hypoglycemia can lead to coma and even death. Thus, the importation of raw fruit has been banned by the FDA since 1973. Get, go, wait, I'm an On the plus side, the fruit may still be purchased in canned and frozen forms, but is still very rare as the FDA doesn't really fully trust this fruit. We know that we're all supposed to get our portion of fruits and vegetables each day, but the Aki fruit will probably never be in yours if you live in the U.S. You're better off eating berries and carrots instead. <laughs> British beef and lamb. Rack of lamb? Seriously? Way back in 1989, the United States banned the import of British beef and lamb because of concerns regarding bovine spongiform encephalopathy, BSE, a condition that became more commonly known as mad cow disease. Although the ban still stands today, some health experts believe that concerns over the risk of BSE derived from British beef or lamb are likely overblown. I am not a killer. I am but a humble purveyor of disgusting British food. In 2015, for instance, there were only two cases of BSE in the United Kingdom, and no cases in 2016, compared with more than 1,000 cases per week in 1993, at the height of the BSE epidemic. 
Just like with haggis, there have been rumors that the United States may be considering lifting the ban on British beef and lamb, since it has been shown that sheep, goats, and other small ruminants pose a minimal risk of spreading the BSC disease agent, the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service is proposing to remove the current BSC-related restrictions on imports of live domestic sheep, goats, and small ruminants. These are all legitimate foods! as well as most sheep and goat products. Kinder Surprise Eggs. Kinder Surprise, a treat for the imagination. If you have a young child, you're likely familiar with Kinder Joy eggs. These egg-shaped split chocolate treats come with a toy separate from the chocolate egg. Well, the earlier iteration of the delicacy sold in Europe, called Kinder Surprise Eggs, has been banned by customs in imports in the United States because the toy is contained inside the chocolate egg, which poses a choking hazard per the U.S. government. America. Ready for another lesson? According to the FDA, the following are banned. Confectionery products containing non-nutritive components, such as small toys or objects, which may be partially or completely embedded in the food product. As of 2018, the United States Customs and Border Protection has seized more than 160,000 Kinder Surprise eggs from international travelers and in international mail shipments. While the Kinder Egg is still banned from being brought into the U.S., they are starting to produce their own version versions and kinder products for kids to enjoy. Luckily for us all, as let's be honest, it's not just kids that enjoy this chocolate with the toy surprise inside. Are they chocolate eggs? Golden chocolate eggs, that's a great delicacy. Beluga caviar. It's beluga. Macmillan orders it every year. There are many reasons for countries to ban importing certain items and foods. Many of them have to do with the threat they pose or how harmful they could be to people, which we think is fair enough. However, sometimes a food item can be banned because it's actually harmful to the animal itself. That's exactly what the U.S. did with beluga caviar. How do you take a caviar, sir? No caviar for me, thanks. Never did like it much. If your idea of a casual snack is a small dollop of beluga caviar on top of a crisp piece of Melba toast, we're sure you've been weeping since the U.S. banned it in 2005. But your bank account has probably been happy. The New York Times reported that the United States Fish and Wildlife Service issued the ban because of the overfishing of the endangered prized beluga sturgeon, which primarily calls the Caspian Sea its home. The salty treat, which is considered one of the most expensive foods foods coming in at roughly $220 per ounce did have its international ban lifted in 2007 by the UN, but the US ban is still in effect. Forever. Forever. And hopefully, this will go a long way to helping the animals thrive once more. Unpasteurized milk. Do other people eat these? Yeah, they lap it up. And they know it's your breast milk? Yeah. The debate over raw or unpasteurized milk is a very heated one in the United States. Currently, 18 states have banned the sale and buying of raw milk, but this looks set to increase to 21 states. Way back in 1987, the FDA required all milk and milk products to be pasteurized for human consumption if they wanted to cross state lines. You probably remember the story of French scientist Louis Pasteur from your middle school science class who discovered pasteurization, the heating of raw milk in order to kill off bacteria. Obviously, unpasteurized milk or raw milk skips this step, which means it's pretty much milk straight from the source. What's the sign for sour milk? Because uh, it tastes a little funky. The CDC has stated that consuming raw milk can lead to diarrhea, vomiting, and possibly death. Raw milk is basically a host for all sorts of nasty stuff, such as listeria, E. coli, and salmonella. Milk was a bad choice. Despite these known dangers, raw milk advocates still say that the pros of drinking unpasteurized milk outweigh the cons. However, a lot of states in the U.S. disagree, and drinking or using unpasteurized milk is likely to be banned for a long time to come. 
Kasu Marzu. Dangerously cheesy. Many people love a good chunk of cheese and love nothing more than to try all the cheeses the world has to offer. But for a lot of other people, the thought of eating congealed milk isn't very appetizing. Kasu Marzu literally translates to rotten slash putrid cheese. However, it is more affectionately referred to as maggot cheese, which is a food from Sardinia. Yes, we know, the name itself is enough to get this food banned. Cheese. Yeah, didn't we lock you in a dumpster one time? I got out. While the Mediterranean is known for its delicious cheeses, according to many, Kasu Marzu isn't one of them. This cheese is made from goat's milk, which isn't unusual for cheese, but what gives it its edge is the other part of the process. During the early part of the fermenting process, larvae are introduced into the cheese. After a few weeks, the larvae hatch and begin to feed inside the cheese. Then the cheese is ready to eat, larvae and all. If the thought of maggot filled cheese doesn't excite you, don't worry, you're not alone. In recent years, health authorities have put their foot down on this cheese as it doesn't meet modern sanitation requirements, and it is now illegal to make in many countries, the United States included. It's the Leaning Tower of Cheese. <laughs> Ortolan. A deep-fried songbird. You eat it whole. Oh my gosh. The traditional method of cooking this little songbird would make many nature enthusiasts encourage a ban. It is so bad, in fact, that tradition says those who eat this French delicacy should cover their head with a napkin to hide the shame of such a decadent and disgraceful act. The birds are captured during their migration to Africa and kept in dark cages where they are fed grain until they nearly double in size. Then they'd be thrown into a bucket of Armagnac, a type of brandy, where they'd drown and marinate at the same time. Even more disgusting and disturbing, if that's even possible, is that the diners would eat the bird in one bite. Put it in your mouth and eat it whole, head, beak, and bones included. It was supposed to be extremely tasty. Um, it's a rather unique flavor. While the cooking method is certainly controversial because of the popularity of this dish, the Ortolan population decreased dramatically in the 1970s and 1980s. And in 2007, France ramped up the ban, setting a 6,000 euro fine for the killing of one of the little songbirds. The ban stretched right across the EU and into other parts of the world, including the US. Not only was the cooking method banned in the US, but since these birds are endangered, American chefs are prohibited from the barbaric and cruel preparation. They killed chef. You bastards! You bastards! And thankfully, there will be no one eating this once popular dish in the future. Absinthe with Fujon. Fromer says it's illegal in the States because it makes you hallucinate and go crazy. Absinthe is fabled to increase creativity and was well-loved in the artistic community. It was a known favorite of Vincent Van Gogh, Oscar Wilde, and Ernest Hemingway. It's long been held that the drink may cause visual hallucinations and psychotropic effects. Because of this, when bans on alcohol were lifted following prohibition, absinthe remained illegal in the United States until recently. Oi! Absinthe! In 2007, the sale of absinthe became legal as long as the bottle contains only 10 parts per million of thujon. Thujon is a neurotoxin found in plant oils like wormwood, which is the key ingredient in absinthe and gives it its distinct bite. Adverse effects of thujon include hallucinations, insomnia, kidney failure, restlessness, seizures, vomiting, and more. Thujon is banned as a food additive in the U.S., and its presence in foods and beverages is regulated in several countries. It might be worth noting that by the end of the modern distillation process, authentic absinthe contains very little thujon. In fact, some experts have suggested that a customer would be stricken with alcohol poisoning before they would experience any hallucinogenic effects from the brew. I gotta say, I'm not feeling anything. Me neither. Stay right here and tap or click another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.